I think in recent years, Yellowtail Snapper have uh, kind of expanded their range in the Gulf, and I seem to catch more of them now than I ever have before. Um, two or three years ago, we were catching half dozen smaller ones while we were hog fishing on some inshore bigger ledges and, and rock piles. Um, so now offshore, pretty much every spring and wreck is, is looks like this. This is a very very popular wreck, aka the Mexican Pride. It's about 40 miles offshore, um, and if you can see the fish down here, we had them chummed up. It was all yellowtail snappers coming up off the bottom. You could look down the water, it almost looked like an aquarium, and so you could see he's just kind of freelining a, a chunk of bait and uh, got hit and missed it, but the yellowtails were, were literally up to the surface trying trying to eat you know, shrimp, all the chum that we had going. Um, and it, it was a pretty incredible sight to see and, you know, we we kind of had to rush them to get them away from the amberjacks, the kudas, and all that. Um, real awesome fishing. So, big yellowtail there. Uh, average probably two to three pounds. Good eating the deeper you get. And go on the Mexican Prize about 120 feet. You get out a little deeper. You know, you get some four or five pounders. You get out past 200 feet. You might see some six, seven, eight, nine pounders. And no doubt in my mind, there's, you know, a world record out there somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico still. Um, so, what I did is I decided to send the GoPro down to see kind of what was below. The battery was real low, so I didn't get a whole lot of footage. I kind of wish I would have gotten more. So that's basically the surface. So as it's going down, you can see all these fish. There's amberjack, there's yellowtails, just all over. Um, so yellowtail, yellowtail, yellowtail. Big school yellowtails that came way up in the water column. And every time we threw a little bit of chum out, they'd come right back up. And it was easy to, to get them hooked with the jig head as it was falling, but what I was noticing is, you know, as the jig head's dropping through the water column, if you're hooking them um, any deeper than, say, 20 or 30 feet, you were getting cooted, amber jacked. And so, ideally, what I decided to do was was cut off all weight and just free line to try to hook them, you know, 10 feet below the surface to give ourselves a, a better chance. And next thing you know, we, we ended up with, with 20 yellowtails and, and one big mango, too. There's a, you know, school of mangoes that came up, um, weren't quite as aggressive as the yellowtails. So you can see them there, and there's a cuda. This is probably about 30 or 40 feet down now. So that was where the problem was if we were hooking them below the boat and down uh, a little bit deeper, you know, cudas, AJs, goliaths, um, and you'll see what else as I drop this a little more. So just as, as it's going down to the water column, mangoes, yellowtails, just all over. It was, it was a pretty incredible sight to see. Some more mangoes, more yellowtails. Let's see if I can just back it. So... They were all there, kind of curious, you know, checking out the GoPro. So as it gets down a little deeper, what do you start to see? You got more AJs, some bigger ones. More AJs, that's a big school of them. More yellowtails, yellowtails. And you can start to see the wreck kind of come into the picture here. Oh, look, a little permit. Um, I can't really tell how big it is, but I've heard of, you know, some monster permit being caught out at the Mexican Pride. We had crabs, couldn't get any to eat that day, but uh, definitely something to keep in mind if you're fishing any deep wreck, you know, a lot of permit out on them. So here's the wreck kind of coming into view. Start to see some bait, lots more snapper, mangoes, yellowtails. And Goliath there. And monster shark, let me just back it up slightly. So another reason we were getting broke off, monster bull shark. Um, I'm assuming they live there year-round. I've heard divers say, that, you know, there's there's some big ones out there, and, and that's definitely, you know, a couple hundred pounds, five, six hundred pounds probably. So more snapper, another goliath. Uh, where we were sitting on the wreck, this is, it. the Mexican pride sits upright. This is the very top of it. And so my GoPro is going down literally... You know, right beside this. I got kind of lucky. You'll see it in a second. But more glass, more sharks, big sharks, uh, snapper. Um, so right on the edge of that. And then let me back it up. So scamp grouper, which I'm surprised there's this many mid-sized fish with the amount of glass that, that live out there. Um, I've heard that, you know, they're very aggressive as well. So the GoPro ends up going down into the wreck. The wreck's obviously filled up with a lot of sand and sediment. 
And I got kind of lucky because I pulled it right back out. That was a scary moment for me. <laughs> when I looked at this back later, I obviously didn't know at the time that that had occurred. Uh, so coming back up, more bait, another Goliath right there. And the GoPro would, would die. But it's an awesome look at, you know, this this wreck's extremely popular. It's hard to get out there on a day when there's no other people around. Um, we just got kind of fortunate. And the yellow tails, to get them chummed up like that, you need really need the conditions to come together. There's no tide. Um, the winds were real light. So we had kind of slick seas. When you get the tide moving a little quicker, your chum's not going straight down. The yellow tails aren't necessarily going to be coming up. And, and so we got kind of lucky. So there's a lionfish. Um, more Goliaths, more Goliaths. This is actually kind of a little one. And so very, very cool look at, you know, one of the wrecks I've always wanted to drop the GoPro down on, and I was able to do it this day. I just wish the GoPro didn't die so soon, um, so I could have seen a little more with it sitting up above. Uh, so, and here I'll play it back in uh, full time speed, real quick, so you can just kind of look at, you know, what it is in in real time. So lots of snapper, the spinning, you know, something I can't really deal with. It's uh, just gonna happen. So there is an underwater look at the Mexican Pride. And I'm just going to show kind of what the surface fishing was like. So here's the footage of that. and Enjoy. There. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. There's the yellowtail's back. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. There you go. I'm going to give you a shrimp too. They're easier to hook. Got some fish to fillet now. Yellow tail, yellow tail, I love me some yellow tail. Fatty. Oh, yeah, man, that's grade A. Right, that's, a, that's a nice one. Y'all keep me busy just taking fish off. Get him up, get him up, get him up. Uh-oh. Still free? Still free. I see him chasing him, though. It's Yelltail. There you go. Nice Yelltail. Nice fish, sir. Boop, 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 boop. Look at those little stacky yellow tails right here. Oh, big rod just got blasted. Ugh. I think it cut. Oh, yeah, look at the boil behind the boat. Quarter mile that way? That's a lot of white water. There you go, they're back. Patty Day or what, Jim? <laughs> like my Swimmy one. Look at how fat they're getting from all the chum. 
coming in with full bellies. That's the way I gain weight too. Look at the look at the size of that amberjack. Good lord. Yeah, he's chasing. He's heading for it. There was about a 70 pounder chilling down there. 